Well, hello, rubber band again. And um, today, what I'm going to be showing you is how to properly service an M Heart cylinder. This will work for pretty much every cylinder that was made in the M Heart style, given that they all need to be serviced through the, uh, the top. So you will have to remove some sort of cap strip. So the cap strip is right here. So the, the easiest way to get this off is by a small hammer. I have a locksmith hammer here that has uh, brass and plastic on one side. Uh, this is what I tend to use for cylinder work when I need to. So um, in order to get to this cap strip, uh, the best thing to do is to remove the cam. That will make things much easier to service in the long run. So I'm gonna remove these screws. Uses a number one Phillips. So we're gonna put parts in the seventh chamber of our digs tray. Shameless plug to my friend over at Digby Lock and Tool for making some of the coolest trays. I, I uh, was the sort of originator of the idea of this mini or micro tray technically and the mini tray. So uh, go over there and buy some once the alpha lock is done. So, all right, now that that's out of the way. And by that, I mean the shameless plug. So there's a Russ 1 Emma Hart, uh, uh, mortise cylinder and uh, I really like this finish so I'm just kind of marveling at it for a second so uh, the best thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this we're gonna put it just against the back edge of this cap strip so I'm going to zoom in slightly and we'll try and get a better view of this so I'm gonna take this place it just so at an angle probably roughly 45 degrees to the cap strip. Move the light source a bit so you can see that. All right, and we're gonna tap until we just break under. Okay, that didn't take much for this one. So sometimes they can take a little excessive force, but nothing really extreme. So we're gonna kind of lever this up. Keep your finger on the cap strip because otherwise it will launch and you will lose springs and uh, you can also warp some stuff. Okay, so it's peeling off pretty quickly. So we're gonna let this come off. All right, it doesn't always go that smoothly, and uh, but this process will work as long as you keep the, your, your finger over the strip. So now we're gonna remove our springs. Here we go. Now, if you're not like me, and you don't have an M Heart pen kit, and most people don't. Uh, this can seem kind of intimidating because if you lose parts, uh, they can be hard to source. However, the springs are still made and they're the same as normal uh, steel springs, so everything's fine there. The only difficult thing that you need to worry about is the pins. Speaking of which, let's get some out. So put your finger over all of the others and just kind of tap them out. I'm going to let them separate because that will be part of the servicing. Ooh, that's a real long key pin. Uh, so the M Heart is my favorite lock cylinder because of the interlocking pin principle, which I think might be the only lock out there that actually used it. And I think that's neat. So, all right, we'll take our tweezers here. Get these other pins out. Great, okay. So, interlocking pins interact with this grooved plug, the, uh, the top protrusions of the key pin would interlock with these. See how they, they slide? So, they interlock just so. Ooh, man, I need to be more on camera, but okay. Um, anyway, less about that. There's other people with better videography that are able to explain the intricacies of this cylinder. So what we're going to do now is now that I showed you how to take it apart, 
we're gonna do the artful recreation of putting it back together. And by artful, I mean it's not. So uh, this was the anti-drill shield. So that fell out. That kind of gets nested right up here. I'm gonna zoom back out. Okay. Oop. Okay, there we go. We'll take our tweezers here. Try and get it to rest just so. All right, there we go. And now we're gonna put our plug back in. Reach around the camera here. So there's just, uh, there's, there's not much I can do about how sloppy this might appear. So get that right there. We're gonna interlock our pins. They slide just like this, like the like the coolest little uh, Lego that you could have in a lock. So drop that in the back pin chamber, and then we're gonna just make sure our plug is rotated to where it will allow it to fall in. Okay, and now we are locked in place. So I like to poke this flush with some tweezers, and we're just gonna repeat the process for all of these other pins. So another difficult part about these cylinders is the cap strip, which is, um, they were designed to be replaced each time you rekeyed them, or rather they were meant to be. I wouldn't say designed, that might be poor lexicon, but um, locksmiths don't really like to waste things if they can reuse things because everything is money. And um, when you're dealing with high security key systems, there's a lot of money in, tied up in that. Uh, insofar as you can still buy M heart pins, they're not extinct. However, you must buy them priced by the each, but in multiples of 20. And they tend to be right around $4.50 per pen. So if I wanted to recoup my top pens, for example, you know, I would, uh, if I wanted to do both sizes, I would be out, you know, about, you know, 80 bucks. So like for for just the the quantity of 20 so like maybe a whole bunch of whole bunch of money ends up getting tied up into this stuff don't check my mathematics i'm not here to do arithmetic okay we've got our screws but first we're going to do springs all right Everything's going pretty smoothly so far, and it tends to if you've done this a few times, and I have. I have a client who actually uses M Heart stuff to this day, and they maintain a contract. So, um, given that the the amount of money they expended to become part of that key system, I do not blame them. All right, so now we have a malformed cap strip. So, what are we going to do about that? Well. I will tell you. So I'm gonna move some tools out of the way and I'm gonna bring new tools into the way. So um, give me one moment while I do that. We tilted our cylinder here. So I'm gonna get that out of the way. And here's the cap strip. So because everyone has their vices, I will show you mine. This is the next part, so that's why I uh, that's why I did that. I'll need to get my cap strip out from underneath because I don't plan ahead for anything. Okay, so here's my little tiny vise. You need to bend an angle into these because this needs to be able to sit back and then sit under the lip. So if this if my nail is the lip of the machining of the mortar cylinder, it would need to sit under this so it doesn't. When the key goes in, it doesn't pop off. So let's do this. I have this sort of preset to an angle that it will 
Oh, okay, I'm gonna need a hammer flat. So let's do that. You can do this on the jaw of your vise. If you don't have a vise for this, this might be difficult, but you can do it with a pair of pliers. So you can hold this and some pliers and do this one little bit at a time. It's no big deal. It is just brass. Okay. All right, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna clamp it. And I'm gonna just hammer some clamping blows over with the brass side. Brass on brass action. Oh, that's a nice brass. Okay, we've got an angle, which is exactly what we wanted. So we will set it up and I'll show you. Look at that. That's actually close to how they would look out of the factory. So I'm gonna move these vices out of the way and we're gonna continue the assembly. Hey, look, it's the cylinder again. What are we gonna do there, Mr. Cylinder? Well, we need to get this cap strip on here and we need to do it in a way where we can kind of have three hands. So let's get a zoom in here. All right, we'll get that centered as best I can. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the cap strip. We're gonna set it right over the top here see once it's set, seated in this channel i'm gonna just put my finger over the top so it doesn't move anywhere and i'm gonna take my same little screwdriver right here and it's gonna become a chisel so i'm gonna angle it to where it takes up the most space ah, see that's what i meant by three hands well now have I ruined an entire video? We shall see. No, because I found my spring and uh, it's a short enough interruption to where this am absolute amateur hour of a job will um, let me salvage uh, what I'm doing here. So, all right, cap strip over here. Okay, we're gonna push down, we're gonna push it all the way back. Okay, this is gonna act as a chisel. I'm gonna just hammer with the plastic side of my, and I'm gonna flatten out part of it. And then I'm gonna move slightly forward and I'm gonna repeat the process. Need to make sure you get it flat enough to where it won't move. So, all right, finally did that part. Now we're gonna go up here. It looks like I'm gonna tap that back over. Okay, well, let's restart here. Why would we not show the gory details? All right, I'm gonna go off camera and reform this. cat pin full disclosure I'm using a, a new cap pin for this part because 
This is going to my friend D&D in Australia, and I would like him to have a uh, a new quality mortar cylinder like he had when he allowed me to do this demonstration. So while my tips do work, um, I'm going to move into the part where I let him have an appropriately nice looking cylinder. Let's zoom out. All right, so I'm gonna go to the very tips each here. I'm just gonna kinda go all the way down the strip. The actual kits for these have a piece of aluminum and a block that this would sit in that would let you do this more easily. So the important thing is that we make sure the key works and it does. So, okay. Very long-winded variant of what this video should have been given that mistakes were made. And uh, I don't have the ability to just keep ripping up this cylinder because it's not mine. I don't want to damage it. It's my favorite kind of lock. So I am doing this uh, so folks can see how to disassemble them and everybody knows that mistakes happen on the bench and this is just a, a bench that you get to look at so pre-thread these in here and now uh what i will do is going to do another investigation of the cylinder make sure everything is fine and that in my hammerings i have not damaged anything so nothing works until it's all put together and tested. So good luck picking this D&D. For those of you that have picked these cylinders, you're absolute monsters. I've managed to impression one of these because I spent a very long time practicing and I had a surplus of Ilka blanks to do it. So, all right, it does work. I've noticed there is a bit of marring in the threading um, and because I'm a nice guy, let's see if we can't fix that. This is a mortar cylinder tap and die set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread this bad boy onto here and see if I can't clean that up. Oh, let's take the cam back off. We don't need to do anything to the cam. That part that I said about being a nice guy isn't true, by the way. So you don't have to take that to heart. You can even be mean to me in the comments. I won't even care. You should make pointed insults about my videography skills and uh, my lack of a controlled environment for things like this. And uh, to that I will say, you're right. How could I have been so foolish? All right, clean it up, clean it up. Great. Okay, it took that burr right out of there. There's a small shiny spot where it got flattened a bit, but um, that is nothing if not bona fide proof that it certainly can be threaded into an install if need be. I don't know what you're going to do with this D&D, but it will be arriving to you in as new a condition as I can make it after having pulled it apart to see if it was mastered for you. So in essence, this is uh, hopefully recompense enough for beating up your original spring cap. It is no longer uh, new old stock unopened. It's been opened 
in box, out of box, cylinders with it open. The whole the whole gamut. So um I hope that this has been somewhat enlightening. Uh Flebron, if you're watching, this uh is partially for you and then to everybody else that is managing to uh, stick along for the ride for these horrible videos uh thank you i appreciate your patience if you appreciate my candor so anyway 20 minute video who fucking cares uh i've been rubber band thanks for watching